taking any medication or supplement, always check with your primary health care provider. Welcome back to Wild on Health. Post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, is the most frequent and disabling psychological disorder that occurs following natural and man-made disasters. And joining us now is Dr. Kathy Kamkar. She's a psychologist at CAMHS, that's the Center of Addiction and Mental Health, Psychological Trauma Program. Thank you so much for joining the show. Thank you, know, you very much. I would have thought that it was actually, you know, man-made or natural disaster. I would have thought it would have been depression. You know, out of home, you're out of sorts, and... It's quite a normal thing for depression to set in, but it's actually post-traumatic uh, stress disorder. It is very much PTSD. We know that, uh, you know, as you mentioned, depression is a very common mental health problem, but also PTSD is one of the most frequent and disabling psychological disorders. And essentially it occurs whenever we witness, experience, or confront a very traumatic, upsetting event that has threatened our safety or the safety of others sure. and we uh, feel intense fear helplessness or we feel uh, horrified it must be such a challenge for yourself as a doctor to identify you know, stress can be spilt milk for some people and it can be being in the middle of war or significant trauma man-made yes. or, or human created yes. how does someone identify I mean what is, is there a criteria that I mean of course there's criteria but how Absolutely. would you initially identify not only the criteria but how to judge that this person should or shouldn't be traumatized this is really an excellent question we often hear uh, now of trauma post-traumatic stress disorder among war veterans uh, police force firefighters sure. um, people who have um, uh, gone undergone violence or assault um, or rape or motor vehicle accidents what we know about th uh, PTSD is that there are primarily three cluster of symptoms uh, there is what we call re-experiencing symptoms so people have intrusive thoughts or images in regards to the trauma or sure. bad dreams, nightmares. Being at war could do that to you, for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Uh, being upset upon reminders of the trauma and then experiencing physical reactions following the reminders. So it could be heart palpitations yeah. or shortness of breath. There's also the avoidance um, symptoms. So wanting to avoid thoughts and feelings or conversations associated with the trauma. Wanting to avoid any, basically any kind of reminders of the trauma. It could be places uh, or people or um, activities. And also at times, we, again, within the avoidance symptoms, people might experience the sort of uh, feelings of detachment or a sense of limited future so not thinking about education goals or maybe careers or, or relationships and then finally the third cluster of symptoms is hyperarousal symptoms mm -hmm. very common so difficulty concentrating difficulty sleeping sure. mood irritability is also very predominant mood irritability feelings of anger um, also hypervigilance so constantly be on guard right. for signs of threat fight or, or danger. flight right you're constantly flight or flight. Guard. absolutely so it, it's a significant and very as you mentioned debilitating condition I mean in context of schizophrenia we're talking about bipolar today we're talking about children's uh, mental health conditions schizophrenia as well as uh, suicide and all kinds of things PTSD is often not in the limelight but we should really learn and understand it and, l and learn to appreciate that people with this condition also experience a similar stigma they may not have started nice, life yeah. with a predisposition of a mental disorder exactly. and it can come on like this but, but is there, and you mentioned, you know, at the break, there is some comorbidity, which means essentially exactly. there is predispositions that set somebody up from the more likely uh, expression of PTSD. So, yes, there is. Um, we know that PC PTSD is a very disabling disorder because it al is also associated with um, other mental health problems, depression, other anxiety disorders, and also substance disorders. And as you mentioned, absolutely, there are significant risk factors. Research has shown numerous uh, risk factors, but there are some key ones that can really... Um, uh, increase the risk of developing PTSD. Um, it has to do with the severity of the trauma, especially if it was associated with any bodily, physical injuries. Uh, witnessing horrific images, especially if we witness others being badly hurt or injured or dead. Uh, lack of social support after trauma is also very important. It's right. a significant risk factor. And also experiencing high level of stress pre-trauma, but also 
after trauma. We know in the case of PTSD, um, and also as you mentioned, stigma is also very important. PTSD is also associated with various other stressors in the aftermath of a trauma. Sure. Of course, that would depend on the nature of the trauma, but typical stressors could be being on disability, it could be not being able to go to work or not perceiving ourselves as being able to go to work. Um, so unemployment, financial difficulties, relationship strains, so all of those various stressors. Or in the case of natural disasters, typical stressors could include um, the loss of loved ones, community destructions or devastations, losing our home, losing our job. So there are various significant uh, stressors. And it's not to feel ashamed if you haven't necessarily been in the middle of uh, war or battlefield, but if you're watching it on TV and, you know, a lot of individuals are more, you know, I, I guess, you know, fragile or susceptible to images. And, and like we mentioned, they have may pre maybe uh, predispositions. But if you feel like you're traumatized, when is it sort of a natural, you know, reaction, like you're watching TV and you've been, oh, uh, versus a significant condition you have to reach out and for? And this is very important to know because in regards to the symptoms that I mentioned, it's very normal and natural to have those symptoms initially. And in fact, most people do report having bad dreams, difficulty sleeping, difficulty concentrating, mood irritability after trauma. Usually those symptoms, after some, some days or even weeks, they do uh, decrease over time. Okay. And it's really um, only when whenever they increase over time, they cause more distress or interfere with our day-to-day -day activities or functioning, this is when it's very important to seek help. Excellent. But quality social support is very important in the aftermath of a trauma. And as quickly as we can, because we've got to go to break, what I really appreciate about what you do, especially as it relates to sort of cognitive behavioral therapy, exactly. and it's, a, it's, a, it's an intervention, but it's exactly. non-medicinal, non-pharmacologic. Yes. Um, so speak really about that and, and, and just tell us what it's about and how it can help people. So it's an evidence-based uh, trauma-focused uh, cognitive behavior therapy. It involves anxiety management skills, exposure interventions, so helping people to gradually confront the uh, situations, activities that places that are anxiety provoking following a trauma. There's also imaginal exposure, helping people to confront the upsetting memories and images in regards to trauma. And of course, cognitive interventions, so really addressing the beliefs and the thoughts associated with distress because we know that after trauma, it does shape our uh, value and our belief system. Dr. Kathy Kamkar, psychologist at the Psychological Trauma Program at uh, CAMH. Thank you so much for joining Thank us this evening. Thank you so much. Very, very